What up, my peoples? This is your Cosmic Homegirl, and I'm doing a forecast of the cosmic weather for the week that begins February 2nd, 2020, and ends February 9th, 2020. I had to think about the dates because the year has changed, and now the month has changed, but I got through it. <laughs> I didn't say 2019, and I didn't say January. Yes, the first full week of February of 2020. So this is a forecast for all of us, for all the signs, and just what the energetic weather is like in the air, you know, what's popping. Um, before I get started, you guys, look, Mercury just went into Pisces, which I will talk about in detail. Mercury is pretty much retrograde this whole month of February, okay? Because we do have the pre-retrograde shadow period, which means that um, Mercury is in its shadow period. It's beginning to turn retrograde and it's still, its orbit's a little wonky. You know, it's a little shaky. It's not, it's not like it usually is. And also the um, Mercury is in its retrograde period. The whole, I'm, I'm sorry, um, for the, the second half, for uh, the second half of February. Okay, so the first half we have it in shadow period. It goes retrograde um, in the middle of the month, and then it's retrograde for the rest of February, okay? And this is all happening in the sign of Pisces. Um, so I do have my 2020 horoscopes for the signs, okay, for all the signs. It goes over the retrograde periods of Mercury, of Venus, and of Mars, in 2020 so including this mercury retrograde in pisces that we are going to have this month um if you want to know how it's going to affect your sign i do recommend that you order a 2020 forecast it doesn't just cover mercury retrograde periods it also covers the other ones like i said venus and mars only go retrograde um once every couple of years and this year we have both of them retrograde and mercury so it's like yo like the regular mercury retrograde like three times a year stuff so i'm sure you guys want to know how to navigate through those periods and what they mean for you based on your rising sign or your sun or your moon sign um on these horoscopes i also cover the eclipse cycles the north and south nodes shifting into different signs i cover saturn jupiter i cover everything i cover it all okay and what it means for your sign so i did discount them for the month of february um we're beginning well beginning in the month of february i discounted them um it's my you know i'm kind of bah humbug about valentine's day but to show love to you guys um i did discount it and take a couple bucks off so if you want to know how this mercury retrograde in pisces is going to affect you definitely order this horoscope okay and then you get much much more than that too all right so jumping back um just wanted to let you guys know that right off the bat that you can know how this affects you um maybe not super personally because you would need a personal reading to know how everything angles you and all that stuff but to really get a better idea of how it affects you okay all right, so let's just jump right in. What's going on this this week? Um, well, I did cover February 2nd last week, and I'm recording this after the 2nd because I had a crazy, a crazy work week, and I have another one lined up. So if this gets to you guys a little late, um, my apologies. But hey, you know what I'm saying? Your girl's a hustler. I got to get my hustle on. I'm a mom. I'm a single mom. I got to do what I got to do. But let's talk. Okay, so we have um, we have Mercury going into Pisces on the 3rd of February. Early in the morning, right? Um, it stays, let me give you guys the dates. And I do give them also on Instagram and my Instagram stories. And also on my Instagram, I have a tab that's labeled horoscopes. Like the, um, what are they called? The highlights or whatever. I have one that's labeled horoscopes. I try my best to keep it updated and... Um, I will talk about Mercury retrograde and all the key dates of stuff on my Instagram. OK, so mostly on the stories where I post a lot of stuff. But um, it, Mercury is in Pisces until March 4th. OK, then it goes retrograde back into just the last couple degrees of Aquarius from March 4th until March 16th. Then it goes direct um, back in Pisces again 
um, on March 16th and stays there until like April 11th. Okay, so those are the key dates for Mercury being in and out of Pisces. So what does it mean for Mercury be to be in the sign of Pisces? So Mercury is communication. It's our thoughts, um, what we think about, what we talk about. You know, it's how we write, handwriting, if anybody still writes with pens and pencils and stuff anymore. Um, it's texting, it's DMs, it is typing on your phone, on your computer, whatever. It is mail, like postal mail. It's email, it's speaking, it's everything that we do as humans in this day and age. So Mercury is in Pisces. Pisces is a water sign. It is one of the most intuitive. All the water signs are highly intuitive, right? But it is um, one of the most because it rules nonverbal communication and telepathy. Um, Tapping into other people's thoughts and emotions very intensely and deeply and also tapping into like the unconscious, the subconscious, um, psychic ability, your dreams and receiving messages through your dreams is all ruled by Pisces. Being in tune with the spirit realm, the spirit realm is ruled by Pisces and its ruling planet Neptune. So all of that stuff is um, going to be more emphasized while Mercury is transiting through this sign. Pisces also rules creativity like art and movies, escapism, like um, imagination and fantasy and stuff is all Pisces. So a lot of a lot of people will be more in tune with stuff like that. Um, Pisces rules music, like escaping through sound and music and everything. So people may be more in tune with their music and singing and posting more, more like, you know, little videos or whatever or snaps of themselves singing along to their favorite songs songs and or just posting a lot about music and art and artists and stuff Um, if you are an artist if you are a creative person yo your art can be so much more fire when mercury's in pisces Uh, pisces rules poetry and writing songs and just creative writing and creative speaking in general is all pisces so whether you rap or you sing or you play an instrument because mercury rules your hands um you know you write music you read music the notes of music um even if you're somebody who just feels around on the keys or the strings and you just come up with melodies you know all that stuff is going to be so freaking on point okay when mercury's in pisces um and you guys a lot of you guys know some of you guys don't i actually write poetry it's something that i started randomly when mercury when I had like a lot of uh, Pisces and Neptune transits over the last like year and some change, um, I just started writing it. It just started coming to me. And I'm a Pisces moon. So like my the moon can rule your mind, too. So I'm already naturally like, I guess, inclined towards stuff like that. Um, but this will activate it more. If you are somebody who's naturally like talented and creative writing or any of the stuff I listed, you're going to be, um, your skills are going to like step up. So yeah, just a fair warning, you guys, I may post some more lovey-dovey poetry or whatever. Okay. Um, I do write about astrology and include astrology and tarot references in them. So, um, if you guys enjoy that, check it out on my Instagram, but, um, Mercury and Pisces. Now, you know, Pisces is very into, um, Pisces is very sacrificial, very uh, in tune with the suffering of other people, victimization, um, being a victim, people who are victims, you know, it's about sympathy. Uh, So a, a lot of us will be feeling more of that and speaking to other people more about like, oh, the time that they were, um, victimized in some sort of way or telling sob stories as they say you know but it can also rule manipulation so be mindful of people being a lot more emotionally manipulative during this time now it's cool to share your times of pain and suffering with others so that you guys can all support each other and learn from one another 
and things like that. But I'm talking about the people that try to like swindle you and, you know, they try to get something out of you and manipulate you to give them things when they don't even really need that. They can do things for themselves, but they just don't want to. They'd rather just play the victim, um, playing victim roles within relationships. You know, Mercury and Pisces, unfortunately, can bring that out of people. Dishonesty. Um, because Pisces can be about trickery at times and especially trickery through lies and, and uh, emotional manipulation. So be mindful of that and especially listen, you guys. I will be posting more about this. I'm still deciding whether it's going to be like on YouTube or whatever or, or on Instagram. But while Mercury is in retrograde, and in shadow period in the sign of Pisces, this is a classic transit for exes coming back, coming back, crying, trying to manipulate you, apologizing. Hey, apologies are cool, you know, but do not let someone's tears um, sway you in a, in a different direction away from what makes sense and what um, experience and logic have told you about a person like for example if you were with someone who's now an ex and they did a bunch of messed up things you know and maybe they were abusive or maybe they were this they will bring their asses crying back on some bullshit let me tell you when we have mercury retrograde in general but when it is in a water sign They come back with the tears and the, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Because you know what? Pisces energy, it can rule apologies and, um, you know, selflessness and sacrifice and, oh my gosh, you know, bowing down to people because you feel like you're you're not worthy. Like if you guys are old enough to remember Wayne's World, (laughs) the movie Wayne's World, we're not worthy. We're not like people will bow down to others and like um, give away their their own self uh worth and value sometimes and and just maybe not always in bad ways but to remember like oh my gosh I really messed up and take um responsibility for and accountability for what they've done um and come back with the tears and the apologies and stuff and that's all great but during a retrograde period this is when you can accept those apologies But accepting the person back in your life, it may not always work out in your favor. There's a higher chance of it just being a short-lived little reconciliation. And then once Mercury moves forward again, you will go back to seeing reality a lot more clearly. You'll go back to thinking with a little more logic, um, especially when it goes back into Aquarius, which Aquarius doesn't take any BS. Aquarius is an air sign. It's very like more cold and detached and rises above emotions to see things from a logical perspective and a scientific dis- perspective and dissect things um, rather than just full on emotion and acting and speaking based on that, you know, fueled by just emotion. Um, Aquarius doesn't play that. So when Mercury goes back into Aquarius in March, if you reconcile with the with a shady ex in February, oh, listen, it when when March comes around, you may have a change of heart or maybe they have a change of heart. You know, maybe you take them back and then they're just like, wait a second. I realize I don't really maybe this this didn't work out after all. And then you look like a foo. You know, you look stupid, you feel dumb and you get hurt or maybe you're going to have to do that to the other person because you're going to realize, you know what, this was a bad decision like for us to even try this again. Um, Now, that's not 100 percent guaranteed that it may go down like that, but there's a higher probability when Mercury's retrograde. If you do something like that, go back to some someone, you know, stuff like that, that minds can be changed later. Mercury rules your mind, you know, and it's not in its regular orbit. So minds may not be operating like they normally would okay so valentine's day when and i I will be doing a valentine's day forecast for all of us too when valentine's day comes around if those exes are coming back with their bullshit and they're crying and they're like oh my god can we just try again Ah." or they send you that hey big head text randomly and you haven't heard from them and who knows how long 
And oh, I'm sorry about you know being a cheater and going and getting pregnant by someone else, or uh, you know stepping out with with your best friend and and messing around with your whole crew. I'm sorry about that. Can we? You know, it's Valentine's Day. Like, what's good? If you guys get those messages, just do not, do not. I repeat, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Accept the apology and and just say no thanks. All right, it just block them out. Um, so I know I went in on that, but like, I cannot stress it enough. You guys, I've seen it, I've experienced it, but more so I have seen it, witnessed it from other people. They've told me their stories I've, or I've had to console, you know, some homies over that, um, guys and girls with that happening. So it's a classic transit for things like that going on. So just be aware, just keep it in mind. And, um, just I know Mercury and Pisces Pisces is not the most logical sign okay it's it, it lacks logic I will say that I know I'm a Pisces moon so I'm not saying you know what I'm saying like it so that is hard for me to say um because I know I'm very logical and down to earth due to other placements in my chart you know but uh Pisces energy is not about logic it's about following your your heart's desires and what you feel emotionally compelled towards doing okay or saying because of it's merc because it's mercury we're talking about here okay all right so that's mercury and pisces yay (laughs) okay um the moon is in gemini on the 3rd of february until the 5th of February okay so moon and Gemini days um, I talk about this every month because the moon goes through every sign once a month but I will tell you guys moon and Gemini days are some of my absolute favorites because everything is a joke there's jokes and memes just flying around people are more light-hearted in their conversations and this is good energy because we do have Mercury and Pisces which it, it can sometimes be about heavy emotional um conversations and vibes and stuff but the moon being in gemini makes things brings things back to being like silly and fun and not taking everything so seriously and just being very light-hearted um the only thing annoying about moon and gemini days is people who have short attention spans already their attention spans are like freaking zero like non-existent when the moon's in gemini oh my gosh let me tell let me tell you guys, I'm surrounded like in the the main job that I have in this industry. It's it's all about talking, right? Talking is mo- ruled by Mercury. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Gemini is a very talkative sign. So I'm telling you, my coworkers that are like on air talking, all like they have the gift of gab, you know. And so I'm around them when the moon's in Gemini, and they really have like no freaking attention span, like. They're just gone within like two seconds of your conversation off to something else. So that's the only annoying thing. Um, But yes, moon and Gemini days, jokes, memes, laughs, um, you know, and and being able to be into a variety of things instead of if you're usually somebody that's like stuck on one thing, one topic, or you know, one person for too long. When the moon's a Gemini, you're able to to like switch around, be into a variety of things. And um, I noticed that a lot of people are more into like gossip, like gossip about people, celebrity gossip, you know, office talk and girl talk, guy talk, whatever, when the moon is in Gemini. So just be aware of that. Um, People will be like more quicker to take a bit of information and run with it and spread it everywhere and fly around with that little tiny bit without seeing the big picture. Okay. Um, But yes, the moon is in Gemini from the third until the fifth of uh, February, right? We're in February. Duh. Okay. Um, Just a warning that on February 4th, though. The moon's in Gemini and it'll be making a square to Neptune. And then we have it making an opposition to Mars and Sagittarius. So basically we have three planets um, aligning in mutable signs. We will have Mercury and Venus still in Pisces as well. So we have a lot of the um, 
personal planets, quote unquote, or, you know, the planets that are closest to Earth and affect us like more, um, more strongly, right? All in mutable signs on the fourth. So what do I always say about this? You guys, I give you warnings. Be mindful of thievery and deceit. People just on their BS, um, trying to swindle you, you know, whether that's through conversation and talking, okay, which Gemini is, is the gift of gab, you know, or um, through their actions, which could be Mars in a mutable sign. Um, these planets, it's like they're all disagreeing with one another pretty much. They're causing a lot of friction and tension in the air. And I don't know what it is about all this mutable energy when it's got these crazy angles like this. That's when mofos think it's just like game time when it comes to um robbing people and just crossing the line in like the most absurd ways you know like that's what they do so just be aware of that okay um so on the fourth protect your belongings protect your information your personal information protect yourself from other people just crossing the line in any type of way and uh, just turn up your, your BS meter, you know, your natural um, uh, lie detector and bullshit detector within yourself, because uh, we all have them. Just turn them up a little, a little more, you know, a little higher, a little sharper. All right. On the fourth. So February 5th, we have the moon moving into cancer. Uh, the moon moves into Cancer like midday um, to ap the afternoon in the U.S. And it's like more into the night in the eastern parts of the world. But anyway, so the moon in Cancer, that shifts the mood and the attitude towards being more sensitive. And we already have, you know, we have three planets. Two of them are personal, close to the Earth planets in water signs that are very sensitive and then we have the moon shifting into a water sign too so the fifth could be um, a much more sensitive day so where you kind of just made me more, maybe more introverted more in your own world more in your head um, unfortunately water signs can be water sign energy can be more prone to like paranoia like worrying about things and worrying yourself like so much to where you you really feel and believe what it is that you're worried about to be actually true when maybe it's not. Maybe it's just all in your head and you're just like, oh my God, what is this and what if that? And, uh, you know, so so just be aware of that. Um, especially cancer energy. They're the biggest freaking worry wards. Them and Virgos, man, let me tell you. But anyway, um, the moon is in cancer. Um, it may be a more introverted homebody day, just chilling, watching movies, watching Netflix, watching youtube watching whatever it is that you watch zoning out and zoning off into things comfortably in your own room your own bed your own couch whatever or maybe with a boo you know like all the water sign energy very sensitive uh pisces energy very romantic snuggling with a boo that sounds that sounds uh, beautiful to me um but yeah the fifth could be just a more cozy cuddly introverted day um, with the, when the moon shifts into cancer, people's appetites increase. Um, it's hard to go grocery shopping. Let me tell you, the moon phases that make it difficult to stick to your budget, man, <laughs> are the moon in cancer and the moon in Taurus and the moon in Sagittarius. I would say those are the three moon phases that, yo, it's just like the moon in cancer, moon in Taurus days, they make you hungry like your appetite increases and your cravings increase and you just want everything right moon and sagittarius days like you just don't really see boundaries or limits with anything you're like i can have it all and you know that saying they say like the eyes are bigger than the stomach like you look at things and you're like oh i want this and i can have this and i can have this and this and this that's sagittarian energy and when really it's like oh my god i'm so full now because i ate too much and i really thought i could handle it whatever that's moon and sag so Anyway, I digress. Moon and Cancer days are some of those days, too, that it's harder to stick to your grocery shopping budget. So you want to be aware of that, okay? Um, cancer rules motherhood, whether it's your, your connections to your own mother or if you are a mother or you are, like, uh, very maternal in nature, even if you are a masculine person, a male or whatever. 
Um, the moon in cancer will bring that side of you out, whether you'll be wanting to be more attached to your mommy or attached to whatever main woman is in your life, or um, you will want to be more nurturing and, oh, have you eaten? Oh, my God. Oh, you haven't eaten. Oh, my heart just breaks for you. Like, that's all Cancerian energy. It rules family. Maybe you just want to be around your family more. Maybe you'll just be more, you'll be more um, nostalgic looking at pictures, you know, especially because Mercury is in its shadow period um, sh- uh, of the retrograde cycle. It's in, it, it's in the retrograde cycle. So retro means what? Going back, right? And it's in wa- a water sign, which could be very emotional and um, uh, sentimental. So moon and cancer days and plus paired with Mercury and Pisces. Yeah, people could really be going back over their the memories of the past and pictures and uh, stuff like that and just reminiscing and you could really get in your feels about the past um i will say this mercury in pisces in the retrograde period is very sentimental about the past and it can really get you in your feels and it's like hard for you to pull yourself out okay just a fair warning let me tell you, last year, Mercury was retrograde in Pisces. Um, I think it was during like March and April or something like that. And everybody was tweeting and posting about how it was one of the worst Mercury retrograde periods. But I believe it was in the later degrees of Pisces. So it came across, um, came in contact with Neptune uh, Chiron the that rules like your wounds uh, of your life, you know, like where you've been hurt before, a victim, and da da da, or where you may have hurt others or whatever. It was still in Pisces, um, so a lot of people of different signs, you know, and fire signs are some of the ones the strongest people emotionally, and they can just get through a lot, right? But I even had friends that are fire signs that were saying. Oh my gosh, I can't get out of my feelings. Um, and they were dealing with emotional stuff and being introverted and going ghost. I had one who was a um, Sagittarius. He had a lot of Sagittarius energy. And he went ghost on me for a minute. And I was just like, but then he would be posting some emo stuff. And I'm like, yo, what is going on? And he didn't want to talk to me about anything. And then finally, when the retrograde Merc- Mercury was out of retrograde, and, uh, and in Pisces, or maybe when it came out of Pisces um, direct, then he hit me up and was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't really talk to you. This was going on. That was going on, blah, 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 and my family and this and that, all this emotional shit. I was like, wow, see, I wish you would have told me that. But see, it, it it's retrograde and it's in a water sign that could be very introverted energy too. So people of all signs, I'm just letting you know, it may be hard for you to get out of your feelings. Now, the good thing about Mercury being in the retrograde period this year in Pisces, um, one thing that's good compared to last year is it will not come too close to Neptune when it goes retrograde. It will come up to 12 degrees of Pisces. Neptune is at 17. So, yeah, it will touch Um, the zone of Neptune and that can have more tear you know this is water energy this is Neptune is the god of the ocean and the sea and water Um, and water in astrology is emotions and that can mean tears you know from our actual bodies so uh, there can be more heightened sensitivity and it can be hard to get out of your feels right Um, but it's not going to cross over Neptune it's not going to come into a tight conjunction and it's not going to come in contact with Chiron either so um, this year it is a little bit easier to deal with and it will go back into Aquarius which like I said earlier is a more logical air sign so it's not going to be Um, we will kind of be able to rise above our emotions, above all that water and be like, yo, wait a second. Why am I crying over this? Or why am I allowing this to happen? Or whatever. We will be able to do that eventually, okay, next month, right? But it is, just being honest, going to be harder for you to pull yourself out of of your feels. Um, Pisces rules the oceans. So you may dive deep into your emotions, but just make sure you pull you pull yourself back up. Don't go too far. Okay? Because you can drown in them. And I will tell you guys from experience that happened to me last year. I drowned in my emotions. It was so hard for me to work. It was so hard for me to get out of bed. I became so 
depressed like for real like low like high key like really depressed um for like that whole month it was so freaking hard dude to like <laughs> to get out of my my feelings and stuff um it, it was hard I couldn't give advisement to others it was very difficult because I'm like who am I to give advice to others when I am so depressed my life is so messed up I'm so emotionally jacked up um like I said this year it it won't be as bad but I'm just giving you guys a, a, a heads up, though, okay? Do whatever you can. Talk to people. Um, don't hold everything inside. Let it all out, yes, but don't let it o overwhelm you, you know, all your emotional stuff. And especially on the days when the moon is in other fellow water signs. Um, in February, we've got Mercury and Pisces. And then, the you know, when the moon goes into, like, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces, that's when all the freaking feels can be, like, really overwhelming, Okay. All right. So um, moon in cancer until the seventh. Um, and then the moon shifts into Leo for a couple days where it will be in its full moon phase in Leo. But let's talk about this. Also on the seventh, this is when Mercury goes into Aries or I'm sorry, Venus goes into Aries and Venus, as you guys know, she's a planet of love and beauty and enjoyment and um, relationships, you know, self-esteem how you feel about yourself um enjoying the the physical world the material world around you um that's all venus and she goes into aries she goes out of pisces into aries aries venus and aries is like feisty like venus and pisces is like super mad crazy romantic and she just wants to chill she may not always express herself directly right venus and pisces may express herself by posting things online, very indirect subliminals, you know, um, dedicating songs that's, that the lyrics speak for how they feel, but it's very hard for Pisces to say how they feel. Just being direct and walk up and say, yo, I love you. I, I'm in love with you and this and that, and I want you, or I want to date you, or I want to, like Pisces energy in itself is that's not naturally how it is it's very indirect subtle and subliminal but venus and aries she is yo she's direct she's fierce she's like she'll walk up to you and just grab your genitalia and be like i want this it's coming home with me <laughs> that's how venus and aries is you know, she'll just like throw her leg in the air and be like, you want this or what? You know, like that's how Venus and Aries is. So when it comes to love and hitting on people and all that stuff, that's how that's the energy that's going to be in the air. OK, take it or leave it. Do what you want with it. Um, Venus and Aries, she could be very blunt, very direct about what she wants. Like I said, you know, and she she takes things um she likes to be first she likes to be the winner so she is competitive um people may become more competitive when it comes to love so you know if you see that somebody you're interested in uh they may like nowadays everybody lives on the internet I, that's why i keep saying post this and post that or you run into them or you see them out somewhere or you see them online like and there's any trace of them being with anybody else it may be, maybe, uh, you know, make you want to step it up and, and compete for them. But the thing that sucks about Venus and Aries, at least to me, you know, and, and other fellow earth and water signs is um, Venus and Aries. She loves the thrill of the chase. And so once she catches her prey, the chase is done. She's like, whatever. OK, where's my next uh, you know, the next prey I can hop after and go chase and, and pounce on and conquer. Mwahaha. You know, that's how Aries energy can be. Oh my God. Speaking of yo, like just, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do during this Mercury retrograde because it just brought back memories of dealing with a particular Aries. Actually, I've dated two of them and oh Lord have mercy. Just the things that they do just when they get bored, like, oh, my God, they get bored with you. And then all of a sudden there's other bitches in their phone or sitting on their lap right in front of your face or like, you know, just stuff like that. Aries energy is just down with crazy stuff like that. Anyways, I digress. Um, Venus and Aries. Now, Venus does rule fashion 
and you know what we look like what how we like to dress and stuff like that so aries you know they do have on this website okay i i commend them for having red for fire energy but aries is ruled by mars the red planet so literally aries loves the color red generally speaking about the sign the energy of aries loves the color red because it's fierce and it red rules red is the color of um blood you know and uh the blood pumping and all that stuff like just think that okay adrenaline um so venus and aries you may see more like a red bold red lipstick what i notice um the looks that come out with venus and aries is like Aries is very not no nonsense and just quick, you know, they don't like a lot of tedious tasks. Um, Aries energy in itself does not like to spend a lot of time on their looks, but they do like to look good because they they like um, they have a high sex drive and they do want to attract and, you know, go after who they want and be able to successfully, you know, conquer them or whatever. So I do see a lot of bold red lips with like barely any eye makeup or if any at all, right? Um, that's an Aries looking arched eyebrows like a ram because the symbol for Aries is a ram. Um, my bad. Um, that's also like arched eyebrows, maybe a, an eyeliner, you know, or a little bit of eye makeup, barely, very minimal. And then a bold red lip that's just like, I'm on the prowl. I'm, I'm about to catch me a man or catch me a girl, you know, like that's that's what that's what I see come out. Um, things that ha have lots of metal and chains, you know, on accessories or clothing, um, red, you'll see a lot of red shirts, red clothing just come out a little bit more, um, things that are the color of like metal, you know, Aries rules, metals and steel and stuff like that. Now enjoyment, um, Venus and Aries, I see a lot more like you know, people enjoying sports, which people do all the time anyway, but fire sign energy especially loves sports. Um, so people more so wanting to enjoy sports or outdoor activities, competitiveness, um, like competitive activities and stuff with each other, play fighting. Oh my gosh, I love play fighting. Um, but Aries energy loves play, to play fight too. So that may come out of all of us a little bit more than usual. And, um, yeah, just any, anything that's very physical is Aries. So also I see a lot of, a lot more people wearing like, um, athletic gear and stuff like that. When we have a, a heavy, like a Aries transit, especially with Venus. Okay. So Venus is going to be in Aries until March 4th, right? Yeah. Until March 4th, Venus will be in the sign of Aries. Now let's talk about this for a second, though. Venus is going to right away be in a conjunction with Chiron. As I mentioned earlier, Chiron is the wounded healer, healer, quote unquote. It's an asteroid that rules like all the pain that you've been through in your life, the main pain you've been through, pain, suffering, victimization, and stuff like that. Venus can rule love and can rule money. Just our, you know, ba just keeping it basic and real. Um, so when Venus is conjunct Chiron, there's a lot of things that can come more to the surface they have to do with like um you know being hurt feeling hurt over maybe it can be the past uh where you suffered when it com comes to love or when it comes to your finances your material world like oh my god we were poor growing up and blah 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 or ha try not to have a mindset of being poor or like being a victim when it comes to love um, when Venus is in a conjunction with Chiron. But also Aries is a sign of the identity, the I am, right? I am female. I am man. I am this race or this nationality or whatever. And being proud and fighting for whatever you identify yourself as. So Venus and Aries could be very much about that. People flying whatever flags they feel like represent where they're from or who they are. Um, but when it's in a conjunction with Chiron, people are much more sensitive about stuff like that. So over the weekend, like the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, um, especially, you know, just just be mindful of that. I would not do anything like to crack any jokes or anything about anyone's ethnicity, uh, nationality, race, handicap, sexual orientation, anything that people like strongly identify as being them. They're going to be sensitive about. OK, um, so, you know, if, if you have a sense of humor and you crack jokes and you just don't really see boundaries, 
people will, will take them as fighting words. Okay, they will, they won't take those jokes very lightly. So just a fair warning. All right. So moving along, Moon in Leo from the seventh through the ninth. Moon in Leo days, the moon is our mood, our attitude, how we feel, and the expression of all of the above. So when it's in Leo, it's much more confident. It's strutting. You know, whenever I think of Leos, I think of J-Lo. Okay, like J-Lo, she is the ultimate Leo queen. All right, that everybody in the world knows who she is. So your inner J-Lo comes out, whether you are masculine or feminine, during moon in Leo phases. So when people say, oh, there's just a casual dress code. Uh-huh. When the moon is in Leo, I'm sorry, but you will show up in your most sparkly, glittery, flashy gear that you have. You will be wanting to strut it. You'll be strutting it. You'll be stunting on everybody when the moon is in Leo. Because Leo rules co- having like a high amount of confidence and wanting to show off, you know. Now, what's cool about days when the moon is in Leo and then we have like um mercury and pisces you know very creative energy leo and pisces are super creative signs so they could be days to where like that weekend seventh eighth ninth um you feel like showing off more of like your skills if you have any talent in anything especially creative stuff right moon and leo days can make people a little more bossy a little more entitled um you know they're entitled. oh well you took my parking space uh, I was about to park there, but you took it. You didn't see me. You don't you don't know who I am. You don't know who I am is like a typical Leo statement. <laughs> you don't know who I am. Oh, my God. Yeah. So people can have that attitude a lot more on moon and Leo days. Um, try not to let your head be too inflated to where you are floating off into some other existence where you are the king or queen and you are not. Okay. Because this moon transit can get people in that type of a vibe. Um, But moon and Leo days are very romantic, very playful and fun. Um, And then we've got energy in Pisces and then playful Aries too. Yes, this weekend uh, can be really, really good. Really dope for like love and dating or just, you know, if you just want to have fun with people. Who cares if it's serious or not? Like just having a good time. Um, You know, this is a good moon phase. Mercury, Venus, all this stuff is good. Uh, Good energy for stuff like that. Okay. Um, Leo energy can be a little childish. So people can act a little more childish or just be more in tune with their their inner child I guess or like if you're just playful and very childlike then that side of you comes out more too all right so um this is the seventh okay so on the eighth the ninth depending upon where you are in the world um okay so it looks like it's on the ninth of February yeah so February 9th, um, it's like the wee hours of the morning, you know, here in the USA, but in other places it could be later in the day. February 9th, we have a full moon in Leo. That means the moon is in Leo and the sun is in the opposite sign of Aquarius. So the Leo Aquarius axis is lit up. So what does this mean? Well, in general, a full moon in Leo um This could be like some sort of final decision about something that has to do like between the head and the heart because Aquarius energy is very cerebral, very mental, very logical. And then Leo, the sign of Leo actually rules the physical heart and Leo energy operates based on that heart energy. This is what I feel and therefore and they're like real fiery about it and will just go full speed ahead based on what they feel. Um, not like water signs. Water signs could be more passive about things, but Leo is not a passive sign. They will fight. <laughs> Trust me, one of my best friends is a moon in Leo. Yo, she, I've had to pull her out of so many fights, including with her own husband. Like, oh my God. Not like, well, okay, never mind. I'm not going to tell all her business. But anyways, they're feisty people, moon and Leo people. So um, when we have a full moon in this sign, how we are collectively affected is making a decision between going after our heart's desires with passion and lots of 
energy and and like maybe even kind of forceful or something versus well let me think about this first from a logical perspective is this reasonable is this something in the future like how is this going to affect the future leo energy the fire signs are about right now okay right now this is what i want i'm gonna get it i want it whatever the air signs well um aquarius is a sign that looks into the future so it's not impulsive like that you know so this could be what we're going through in one area of life or the other depending upon where leo and aquarius are in your um your chart or if you only know your sun sign like you know depending upon where it is okay um where these signs are for you but it it is like a lot like should i you know be logic about logical about things and this and that or should i just go for it because my heart just feels it it's like burning you know like i just want to jump after whatever this is um so there's a you know yo-yo back and forth seesaw whatever and then the full moon itself is like the the peak and the breaking point so even like a couple days before the full moon and even maybe a few days after or up to like a couple weeks after is when you may see some sort of decision being made um, when it comes to Leo and Aquarius, you know, type of um, things that they rule or where they land in your natal chart, right? But full moon and sassy Leo, honey. So they can both be about standing up for yourself or standing up for others. These are very protective energies over other people, Leo and Aquarius. So um, there could be some situation that comes up to where you have to be protective over friends or family or a certain group that you defend or something like that. And you've got to really like take a stance and be passionate about it. Um, so that's what this energy can do. Um, this full moon is not making any significant aspects that I would count, um, to any other planets except for Mars. Uh, Mar it's making a trine aspect. The moon makes a good trine aspect to fellow fire sign, um, uh, Mars and a fellow fire sign in Sag. So there is a lot of like action that's involved. And then the sun makes a sextile, which is like a very, you know, it's a light positive aspect. Um, but yeah, like there, there's action that's being taken, but you have to decide like which it what what approach you're going to take okay uh to taking said action all right so that's a full moon in leo that's on the ninth and then the moon um way later in the day it shifts into the sign of virgo and um you know so that evening or whatever once it goes into Virgo, it's a different vibe it is more about logic um the earth signs are super practical logical down to earth pun intended all right um so the moon goes into virgo and then it's less about like oh my god how do people see me how do people know me um how do i look how does my hair look yada 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 it's less about that and more about like all right um i need to clean up my motherfucking life okay <laughs> my room is disorganized laundry needs to be done this house is a mess i need to pay these bills i need i gotta do my taxes yo it's sunday i gotta go back to work tomorrow i gotta be prepared that's a virgo that's a virgo energy and um so moon and virgo days you know i'm not gonna elaborate too much because it's only like part of the day on the ninth and i'm only covering through the ninth but this day um this evening what's left of the day is when you can shift into having more energy to get things done and wanting to just be prepared for the week and for life you know just getting your life together moon and virgo days um try not to be too judgy over others judgmental and picking at people about stuff and complaining don't be get, getting in no big old complaint fest people don't want to hear all of that um but other than that, Moon and Virgo days are really dope if for sitting there and organizing your collections of things and alphabetizing and, you know, color coding your drawers, your underwear drawer, whatever. Like, that's good. That's good Virgo energy. That That's what it's useful for. It's about being useful in general. But yeah, that's how to utilize it. You know what? I'm going to be picky and analytical and anal about something really fast. Speaking of Virgo energy. Do you guys see this mess right here? I don't know why this website has this on here. This is making me mad though. Oh, I still don't know how to. Oh, fuchsius. 
replaces Sagittarius in 2020. You see, this is some old bullshit that, you know, I can go on a rant forever about, but I'm not going to ruin your forecast. <laughs> but anybody who believes this, please just don't, just don't. Okay. And also during Mercury retrograde every year is when this BS will circulate. And then it's like astrology isn't real because now there's 13 signs. And oh my God, I'm not even a Sagittarius anymore. I'm actually, oh fuck, oh, oh, my, my bad. Oh, fu <laughs> oh, oh, fuchsius. I'm one of those. I'm a snake. I'm not an archer. Oh my God. Now I'm not even really a cancer. I'm a, the come on. It's it's fake, fake news. I it's been fake news for years. Only follow real astrologers, not any of this crap. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Why do they have this on here? I'm so annoyed. Come on, planetwatcher.com. Come on, man. What what's going on with this? Don't be spreading lies. Okay. Anyway, you guys, that's your forecast for the week. <laughs> February 2nd through the 9th of 2020. Thank you for listening. If you listen to all my moon and Gemini ramblings and you made it through the end, hallelujah. Thank you. I hope you guys have a good week. Stay tuned for me doing a forecast for everybody for Valentine's Day. So I know a lot of people are concerned about that. Um, and don't forget, if you want to know more about how Mercury retrograde will affect you, not just this one, but also the upcoming Mercury retrograde throughout the year and the rest of the important transits of this year. Um, I go into detail on these 2020 forecasts for all the signs. So I did um, discount them this month. And also, um, don't forget, I do have cla uh, an astrology class um, on my website. Go to the specials page. And I still have my astrology class to where if you don't understand a lot of the little lingo that we speak in astrology houses and uh, personal planets and transits and aspects and all that stuff, um, then I recommend that you take this class. I, get, I break things down very simply and I talk like I regularly talk to you guys, okay, like regular human stuff. Um, I don't get too, too nerdy and complicated. So, yeah, um, I do have this class still available on my website. It's indigomoonastrology.com. So peep those out. I'm not doing personal readings at this time. So these are the other services that I have. But all right, you guys, make sure you have a good week. Watch out for swindlers and don't listen to all those sob stories. Don't fall for the exes coming back crying or any of that. Okay. So follow me on Instagram for more um, horoscope stuff. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.